with Linda Crow from Sun Microsystems. Linda, thanks for joining me. You're welcome. Thank so, you for having me. No problem. So you obviously are a uh, corporation producing video, I'm assuming for both uh, internal corporate communications, external mm -hmm. marketing. Can you talk a little bit about uh, where you are today or maybe when did you first start producing video? Uh, Sun's been producing video for oh probably 10 or 15 years. We've been we were an early adopter in using that uh, media in order to be able to communicate our messages. Uh, so it's it's been a while. So back in the real media days. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Videotapes and uh, uh, you know pre, pre uh, DVD and CDs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so what's uh, so l let's maybe separate the two the two focuses uh, internal communications. Uh, what's typically the, the reason to produce them and how do you distribute them across the organization? Uh, typically what we do is um, it will be executive communications to employees. What do our senior leadership team want our employees to know about? Uh, you know, important announcements related to Sun's business. Uh, and, uh, you know, just sort of general state of the union types of messages as well. Uh, in addition to that, we also do um, quite a few town hall meetings um, with senior executives. We do uh, quite a few internal meetings, staff meetings, where not everybody can travel into a single location or where the cost of travel is prohibitive uh, or, uh, you know, busy people can't take time to travel and, and take the time out of their schedules to travel. So, so, so when you say town hall, I, I hear live webcasting. Yeah, live webcasting and uh, broadcasting that um, to internal users uh, and, and only available to internal users. So a, a question on that front, because I've talked to people at different large companies where let's say they have you know, five major offices in the U.S. and each office has a couple hundred employees. If you're trying to stream a live feed from the internet to 50 or 100 desktops within that one single building, uh, mm -hmm. there, there's a bandwidth challenge there. Mm -hmm. And so what tools and technology are you using for the live and are you doing any sort of peer-to-peer -peer stuff to, to mm -hmm. reduce network congestion internally? Um, so. One of the great things about working for a technology company is that we, we do plan for these kinds of contingencies. So we've got quite a lot of bandwidth internally on our internal network. Um, so IT has kind of solved that problem for us to some degree. Uh, what we do then um, is we take steps to make sure that what we're streaming to the desktop isn't um, terribly network intensive. Uh, a couple of things that we do is we start with an HD signal. If we start with great quality, then we find that um, uh, ratcheting that down in terms of band rate, bit, bit rates, etc., um, we still can maintain great resolution uh, and not overwhelm the network. So it's kind of a two-tiered approach. Okay. And what technologies are you using for the live webcasting? Um, you know, these days we're using a lot of Ustream. It's free okay. and, uh, you know, we've, we've been very happy with the service that we've been getting from them. And are, are there scenarios where you want to have it as a private webcast and can you do that with Ustream so only your employees could see it? Maybe it's password protected or...? Yeah, we, we do a couple of things. One is uh, we only allow uh, access to those streams uh, from internal uh, uh, IP addresses. Okay. Uh, we can password protect the stream. Uh, and we also have the ability to be able to stream uh, from an internal uh, behind the firewall server. Yep. So using a few different technologies to secure that. So what, once you move past the live video, it turns into an on-demand video. Would that then be viewable on the intranet? By so employees? not all of our uh, broadcasts are available then on demand. Some are, uh, and we have a couple different ways that we can approach that. One, depending on what the content is, if it's highly secure content, then. Uh, but we do need to make it available for on-demand. We'll probably host that on an internal server somewhere. Uh, if it's um, on-demand and for a limited audience, we also have on our, um, on our uh, video presentation platform, we've got an edge implementation. So our users can authenticate with the Sun authentication system using a, their login and password and that will pull, pull them behind the firewall and then they have access to videos that only are available to Sun employees. Okay, and then <laughs> for external communications, you're producing marketing yeah. videos, what's kind of the strategy there in terms of 
getting distribution? I mean, is it requiring people to come to the Sun website? Are you posting videos on YouTube? <coughs> So what we have is uh, we have our own video presentation um, platform. We use Brightcove for that. Um, our implementation we call Channel Sun, and that's where we manage all of our videos. Uh, from there, then we syndicate to various different sites, including YouTube. Um, there are a couple of other places that we use as well that are specific to our audiences, um, aggregation points for our audiences. But we syndicate it from the Brightcove platform, so we're always pulling that information from the same file source and from the same video presentation structure so we preserve all of our metrics and we can track all of that. And so, so you only need to upload it to one place, you don't need to upload it to Brightcove, then say okay now let me Ex start to upload to YouTube. Exactly, okay. exactly. <clears throat> Got it. And go ahead. I was going to say not all of our content is um, just on demand. We also do broadcast content um, and that uh, then is yeah sometimes captured and we'll make that available for on-demand later. Um, so when we broadcast, typically we'll broadcast either using Ustream or um, we are uh, we have an Akamai account, so we'll use the Akamai uh, live streaming capability, um, depending on the needs of and you know what we're what we're doing. Um, so we'll broadcast live. That will be presented on a usually on a Sun web page, uh, and then if we make the content available for replay later, <clears throat> it'll be presented in Channel Sun. Okay. And two that you were about to end uh, 2009, 2010 is around the corner. What are you most excited about in terms of your production and distribution of online video? Uh, I'm really excited about our newest implementation of Channel Sun. We've gone in and customized all kinds of things for our employees who are creating their own video and uploading that to Channel Sun. Um, we've implemented a lot of new so, so features. So actually just on that front, so just simple tools where they can click on upload and share video? Well we've had that for over a year now. What we've added is the ability for those users to be able to manage their own playlists, really manage their own content, uh, add their own metadata. It's much, much a much richer experience for employees who are doing a lot of content creation and creating a lot of their own videos to really get in and manage their own their own assets. And that's what I'm really excited about is seeing how our users uh, adopt that. I so, think it'll be really valuable and powerful. So you at the administrator level can see all the videos, but each employee can kind of have a sense of ownership and control over every video asset they upload. Yes, of their own assets, right, cool. right. Okay, and what else? Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. And then the other thing that I, um, I'm really looking forward to in 2010 is just continuing to um, automate a lot of our production processes. Um, so the thing that I manage at Sun is not only that um, engagement with our various different business units, but uh, owning the production processes and then all the distribution as well. So we're really diving in and trying to understand better what our production processes look like and where we can automate and where we can scale. Um, you know, one of the great things about Sun is that uh, we really, our audiences sort of get video and uh, what we're seeing is, is that they are, um, they're consuming it as fast as we can create it. So the challenge now is to try to just keep ahead of that demand and scale our production and with automation tools um, and various other different facilities so that we can meet that demand. You had mentioned measurement, and the great thing about being able to upload it just through Brightcove and then to push it out to other platforms is that you can see how many views. What what types of things are you measuring, and what are the reasons why you're measuring them, and, and how are they affecting what you do going forward? So we've, we started out with measurement just taking a look at how many times a video had been hit, right? How many, how many clicks did we get on a video? And what we found was is that it doesn't matter really how, long, how many times somebody clicks on a video if they're not watching a significant portion of that video. If, you know, you get thousands of clicks but nobody watches past three seconds, they haven't seen your video. So what we realized early on is that it's not just about clicks, but it's about actually measuring how far through that video people have seen. Uh, and once we were able to measure that, then what we were able to do is to determine, um, uh, the, next, the next step was to determine what kind of action did they take as a result of viewing that video and, and was that the action that we had hoped that they would take. So we then started measuring on uh, call to action conversions, what we call CTA conversion. 
Um, and what we found there was that video, while we get lower viewership with video than we would with, say, a text page, a text web page, we are getting a much better conversion rate on the audiences who are viewing that video. They're actually going to and, and taking the action that we want them to. So what we found, so by and just analyzing those two metrics, what we were able to determine was what videos were effective, at what, what people were watching, and then what was effective at converting uh, on the call to action. From there, we were able to then start um, being more prescriptive about the content that we were delivering to our various different audiences. And what we have experienced is, as a result of that, and just a few little guidances, uh, you know, little guiding points to our uh, content creators, um, you know, just a few little best practice tips, we were able to go from high single digit conversion rates on video to we've got a couple of assets that are getting us into the 25 and 30 percent conversion rate. So, you know, it doesn't matter if that video is only viewed 200 times, if we've got a 30 percent conversion rate on that and the call to action is directly into our sales funnel, that's great ROI on a video. So g give me an example of a call to action on an external <clears throat> marketing video targeting technology consumers. Um, I, I, I guess my question is more like, is it at the end of the video you're just saying, and go to sun.com slash special offer, or yeah. where are you <clears throat> driving them to know that they came from the video and how are you doing it? So the call to action could be anything from go to get more information on this website, which is sort of the lowest bar in terms of what we want to call the action to be. Um, and, know, and, and in that example, only the video is sending people to that web page. No, we have other things that would be sending people to that web page, but we can track how many of those views were from, from the, the video. video. Right. It. So so that's kind of the lowest bar of what we want to specify as a call to action. The next would be go and sign up to download this white paper. Uh, it would be register to come to this particular event, uh, sign up for this webinar, join our community, and those kinds of actions are really more in line with what we want our audiences to do. Is to, we want to be able to engage them, we want to be able to pull them into the community, make sure that they're getting information, and start that dialogue, really. Um, and then there are other, uh, you know, there are some resources, there are some call to actions that lead directly into a sales funnel. So it may be, you know, download this white paper and from the white paper then uh, you uh, can request to get more information from a Sun sales representative. Um, and there are even call to action, uh, we're even getting to the point where some of the calls to action on the video are, I'd like to talk to a sales rep. So it's really trying to drive people into that engagement and eventually through the sales process.